All right, we're going to pick up right back where we left off. And in the last tutorial, we were mapping the Haze machine. So that is currently working, as you can see here. Uh, if I move up the slider, we've got Haze. And if you move it down, it stops. And this is rigged up through the I.O. Uh, tab and a little projector over here off to the side, which is feeding into that Haze fixture, which is right here. Uh, so next thing we want to do is light up our first um, our first mover and to do that we're going to follow this DMX map and set up the tin channel control in accordance with this layout right here and this is something I've set up ahead of time uh, this is the device we'll be setting up first I believe it is the one on the left over there on top of the mirror rack uh, up in the air so uh, without any further ado uh, let's just get to that uh, so, uh, to do this, we're going to use the DMX fixture uh, wizard, and let's go ahead and kill our lights, um, or put them back to live. So over here in test, set, and there we go. Alright, so this device is 10 channels, so we want to go and type in 10 here, and... Uh, then we want to go ahead and look at this list. So we've got a few different things. We have pan and tilt. Uh, so let's go ahead and enter those in first. And the place we enter them is right here in the channel name. So we'll say pan and then tilt will be TLT. And you'll see why later. Uh, then we have a pan tilt speed. And so I'll just call this speed SPD. And then we'll do the dimmer, which is uh, the fourth channel, I'll just call this DIM. Uh, next, we have the strobe channel, so we'll call this STRB. Uh, after that, we have the red, green, blue, and white channels, so let's just call this RGBW. It's important to keep these uh, named the same as our uh, pixel channels, which are also named RGB, and this allows us to map content across all of them at the same time. Uh, then we have the lens rotation, which is actually a, a pretty important uh, pretty important channel for this light. All these channels are pretty relevant in the tin channel mode, so let's go ahead and do uh, prism, P-R-S-M. And once we've set this up, uh, it looks good. We want to change device ID to two, which is what we have this device set to. If you look over here, we get ID equals two. Uh, then let's go and name this and we'll call this uh, fixture BI1. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create the fixture. It creates it and we can close this out and let's go ahead and save the project and I'll put this on the desktop in our folder and call this v7 alright so we've got this fixture and we don't currently see anything uh, so what gives let's go ahead and turn on our red green blue projector and let's um, let's go ahead and turn our a couple of our diamonds back on just so we can see a little bit of light in our environment. Uh, cool. I'm going to go ahead and turn one on on the other side too. There we go. And we'll turn these all on later, but this is just to kind of give us some ambient light. So we have a red, green, blue projector, and it is a little bit below the fixture. So let's go ahead and scoot this up in the world. Uh, and now we can see that we have some color hitting our our BI fixture, which is right here. It's this big dot right here. So uh, that's good. Uh, it means we're getting color, but for some reason we're not seeing it on our actual lights, and that's because this particular feature or fixture and most like it um, have a dimmer, and that dimmer is all the way down, so we're not seeing anything right now. So uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this projector. And let's call this projector um, dim. And I'm going to position this a little bit differently, and this is just my own personal preference. Uh, let's go ahead and fit this to scene, fit aspect Y. Uh, sorry, we actually don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and reset this. 
Let's just scale this up. Let's scale it up a whole bunch on X and Y, and then let's rotate this so that it's facing up. And then let's push this down, um, pretty far down. Uh, we, just, we just want this to be out of the way, but we want it to hit everything in our scene, except for the haze machine, which is doing its own thing over there. Uh, so once we've got this down there, we can open up our uh, IO textures and we can give it a texture, but uh, to keep things simple for now, let's go ahead and do a solid color. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn on color override and let's reset this to zero. Uh, one last thing we need to do, we need to actually assign this projector, uh, the red channel for instance, to the dim channel. So if we remember, uh, you can open up VP chans right here on by the way, and we can see all the chans we have in our viewport. And so what we did is we named it DIM, and that's the channel we want to address. So let's go ahead, and grab this projector, and let's scroll down here to the routing area, and let's go ahead and reset everything, and then put DIM into the first channel. Uh, once we've done that, let's turn up our red channel in the set color area. And uh, once that's all the way up, we should see, let's make sure the video is working, yeah. We should see a light uh, turning on and lo and behold, we do. Um, going to adjust this camera momentarily so you can see a little bit more of the room. That's looking good. All right, so we have light and things are working. We're adjusting the correct channel so far. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn on the rest of our panel so we can start seeing stuff together. Uh, so I've got this big orange or red projector down here, and that's the dim projector. I'm going to go ahead and turn down the opacity nearly to zero, and I'm going to turn off the wireframe so this becomes mostly invisible. We don't really see it too much, but it's there. I'm going to take the scale Z down a little bit as well. Just keep it very, very uh, minimal. Okay, so we've got a dim channel. Uh, and, you know, maybe we actually want this dim channel to be controlled via MIDI controller, right? This makes sense for a blackout slider. So I have another slider in my I.O. tab, which I'm going to import. Uh, as you can see, it's 115, so let's bring that in. Uh, and let's call this M dim. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab the dim channel uh, from the I.O. We can source that in to our texture. We can turn off color override. And now if we move our dim slider up, we now have control of that light's dimming. So I'm going to go and put some more fog into the air for a moment. So once we have some more fog in the air, just enough to see things on the camera for you. So I just kind of double check that. It's looking pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> so now that we have that working, uh, we need to differentiate our uh, mover from our regular LEDs here. We have one projector that's hitting everything, but we might actually want to have a different projector for our movers at times. Uh, and so the way we do that is through masking, of course. Uh, that's the best way to do it. You can also just position things in different areas of your world. Uh, but for this, I'm going to use masking so that we don't have to worry about position as much. Uh, so with the BI, I'm going to hop over here into PIX mode. I'm going to select everything, open up the mask map, and then we'll call this uh, um, M1, M2. Cool. Uh, so once we've done that, we want to go ahead and set up our fixtures and our LEDs the same way. And if you're just doing DMX only, this isn't probably as important for you, but uh, let's go ahead and select fixture one. Let's go into our picks. Let's go ahead and select all of them. And in our fixture editor, we can uh, call this M1, which is not taken. 
and it's essentially just a mask that covers everything. And so with that fixture still selected, if you remember from the last tutorial, we'll go to Data Cloner, we'll copy, and then uh, we did delete our selection set, so we're going to have to do this uh, manually. So we'll just select everything else. And once we've done that, we can paste the M1 mask to all of these objects. And uh, what that should allow us to do now is duplicate this red, green, blue projector and call this RGB DMX and RGB LED. And now we can go into the mask palette and choose M1. And then for our other uh, projector, we can go in here and choose M2. So we essentially, uh, nothing actually looks different, but we, we, what we've essentially done is taken the mover and we put it on one projector, which I'll move it back a little bit. And we've taken the LEDs, we put it on a different projector. We can see this if we uh, turn on constant color override and just set a maybe a red value. And you can see that mover is pure red while everything else has got the projector from the data from the other projector going across it. So I'm going to go ahead and move this BI over to uh, approximately here. Let's say negative 200, let's do negative 150. Uh, should be good. And that puts it spatially more or less where it is in the real world. Uh, so once we've done that, and we're kind of happy with this uh, setup, I'm going to take constant color back off for the DMX projector. I'm going to make a new object in the I.O. tab. I'm going to drop uh, a very subtle ramp, nothing crazy. Uh, and it's going to be a horizontal ramp, and we're going to edit this. And let's just go from... Um, red I guess to uh, maybe kind of a purple to maybe kind of a green greenish blue and then we'll go back to red so we can close that and we'll just call this ramp DMX RGB and this is just so we can see some movement on our movers lights uh, I see some subtle color shifting, that looks nice. Uh, great, so the next thing we want to do is get some of our other channels hooked up. So we have the dim, and we have haze. What about pan and tilt? Uh, pan and tilt, for now, we can just hook those up to sliders, and I think that will be a fine place to uh, stop this tutorial. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that going. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete or duplicate one of these projectors. And we'll call this uh, P Pan. And I'm going to, uh, for the sake of keeping things kind of organized here, let's, uh, I meant to keep that number. Let's go and put that back. Let's spin this around 180 degrees. And let's put this behind our array. Uh, just kind of have some spatial recognition of what's what. And we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and clear the texture, turn on the color override, and uh, we have the red channel here, and that's good. So let's go ahead, scroll down, let's clear our routing, and for this projector we should put in our R channel our pan, and our pan is simply spelled P-A-N, so we'll go and put that here, P-A-N. And nothing happened, that's because our value is at zero, but if we start tweaking this value, you'll see that this thing spins around, uh, blinds me, and uh, returns back to its original location. So this is good, um, things are looking fine here. Uh, what we can actually do uh, with this projector um, well, let's keep it separate. It'll just keep it a little bit easier. So I'm going to duplicate this projector again. I'll move it back a little bit more, and we'll call this tilt. Got a character in there I shouldn't have. Tilt, 
and then we'll put into the R channel uh, TLT and uh, once we've done that we should be able to adjust our pan successfully so that's looking pretty good uh, I guess we're going to get the rest of these projectors set up for this light and then we'll call it uh, end of video there so all right um, tilt let's duplicate this let's move it back again uh, and then for their tilt, we'll just rename this to, let's see, what other channels do we have here? Uh, photo, we got pan, tilt, strobe. Let's go and get our strobe channel activated, working. Um, so we'll call this strobe. And uh, once we get that named, we can type in our strobe channel name here, which we look in VP Chans is STRB. STRB. Uh, so if we go ahead and slide this up, we'll see that our strobe happens as we expect it to, and we'll put that back down for now. Uh, and then the last thing we need to hook up, I think, is our. Uh, well, we could hook up the white channel. I'm going to leave that out for now. Uh, is the lens rotation, the prism effect. So. I'm going to duplicate this strobe and uh, move it back a little bit more, and we're going to call this uh, PRSM. Well, we can name this the full name here because we're not limited. Prism. Uh, and then once we've done that, we just need to set this up with our prism channel, which is PRSM. Let's go and put that in here, PRSM. And uh, if we adjust that, we will see our iris rotate. Uh, and that's exactly what we'd expect to have happen. Uh, so that's pretty much it. We have successfully mapped every uh, relevant channel in the BI Mover, uh, channels one through nine, uh, 10 actually, with the exception of the white channel. And what we've done is we've laid things out here spatially. So we have the red, uh, the color channels in the front. We have the auxiliary, more machine channels here in the back. And then we have some uh, some stuff that we don't want to worry about too much here in the bottom, like the dim channel. We could have put this back here as well, but uh, either way, um, we're going to have a few more here and in front and back once we get the other mover mapped in the next video. But for now, this is a great place to stop and take a break. All right, uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.